Keefe D mentions in the interview that he, he wanted Orlando and Tupac to fight one-on-one, -on -one, and that's originally what they went to Club 662 for. Again, this is just Keefe D elaborating on the story with the intention of providing some type of mitigation to the responsibility of it all, you know, and he's kind of talked himself into a corner um, when he confessed to begin with, and so now he's trying to do damage control with that. And he lost a lot of face with his crew with Southside after they found out that he had thrown Orlando under the bus and that he, you know, cooperated with law enforcement. And so now these years he's just constantly trying to figure out a way to juggle it and manage it so that uh, he doesn't look as bad as he did. So he never mentioned this? No, in the, in of course the, uh... not. That's not the way they take care of business. Come on. You're going roll... <laughs> to roll up to a establishment full of your enemies and walk in after you've just had this fight and say, hey, let's do this the gentleman's way, a one-on-one -on -one fight. Like, right, that's right. just not the way gangsters do business. Do you know if they thought Tupac was dead at the time? Well, you know anything about their conversations afterwards? No, Keefe D told us that he thought Suge was, had been shot in the head. And so his impression was likely, at least in that immediate aftermath, he would have thought that, you know, somebody gets shot in the head. You know, typically that's a mortal wound. So, you know, um, the next day, of course, the reports start coming out on the news about Tupac being in the hospital in critical condition. So they would have known as soon as the reports came out that, that, that he wasn't dead. I don't know what they thought as far as the shooting. Obviously, Orlando laid down some fire. How many times he shot Tupac, he wouldn't have probably known, but he probably would have known that he hit him. Okay, so, um, so at this point, um, they get back. They get back from uh, Vegas. And um, Monday comes around, and Puffy calls. Um, I believe Zip on Monday, and they meet up. Keefe D said the following day. So if the fight was Saturday night, it could have been in the afternoon of Sunday, or you know maybe Monday. Okay. Depending. And, and can you take me through that? Yeah, he says they're at the wing spot up on Melrose, and um, he's with Zip, and the phone rings, and uh, it's Puffy on the other end of the line, and he asks the question, "Was that us?" Did he say anything? Well. Who, Keefe D? Yeah. Talking to Puffy? Yeah. I, yeah, he affirmed it. Yeah, that was us. Okay. In his book, he says, Faith called Zip right before Puffy called. Okay. Is there anything to that? No, except that, you know, Faith understood the dynamics of all of these relationships. You know, Faith knew that, um, that Zip, she was close with Zip, obviously, and when she would come to L.A., and these gangsters would be around, Zip would tell her, you know, these guys are just here kind of, don't worry about them, they're just here as basically security or part of the crew. So it would have been natural for her to draw the conclusion after seeing what, or hearing about what happened in Vegas that it had something to do with that. Okay. So it, she, out of curiosity, may have called and just been like, what the f what's happening? Uh -huh. Is there any, any, proof, any proof that Biggie knew anything about none. what was going on? There's none. So people can speculate, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but we don't have any proof one way or the other. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon, so hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.